listening at whatever time you're listening. Now, if you're a new listener, I am Jared Neymarek. Call me Jared for short. Kick your feet up. Act like this is home. Because what you're listening to now, we can treat this as a little sanctuary. You can call this the Mental Health Check-In Podcast because, well, that's what it's called. This is a podcast about healing, or rather, spreading healing. This podcast about spreading mental health awareness as a means to help all of us heal. Because as I often like to say, the more we learn, the more we heal, and in this episode, we'll be learning and healing from one Billy Dixon. Billy Dixon is an independent professional wrestler and booker, booker being a term for producer, meaning he produces his own shows often. He's produced shows like Bridge vs. Gore, Paris is Bumping, the first ever ballroom kiki wrestling show, which... Come to think about it, if memory serves me correctly, I think a previous guest of mine, Patches Chance, actually mentioned it a little bit while the event was still in pre-production, so to speak. And currently, Billy Dixon is working on his next wrestling event, the Cassandro Cup. The Cassandro Cup is going to be, actually, as you're listening to this, it's going to be out one week from today on March 28th. Available to stream on independentwrestling.tv. In this episode, he'll talk more about what that event means to him and why it's important, it's significant. But I didn't just bring Billy on here to talk about his wrestling event. I also wanted to talk about just his perspective as a wrestler, which I think is just really interesting as a sport that's so physically demanding. And as much as the wear and tear on the body has been addressed in recent years, I don't think as much... Attention has been given to the wear and tear on the mental side effects of wrestling on a wrestler, I think. And I think Billy offers an interesting perspective on that. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't really dive as deep into that topic as I would have liked because Billy is a very busy, busy man, which is perfectly okay. That's perfectly fine. But I still think that what he did have to offer in a short amount of time in this short episode, I think it's very valuable. And... I think it's good for anyone interested in wrestling or not interested in wrestling. So if you want to hear more of that, I'm just going to dive into that very shortly. But first, first and foremost, I just got to say, if you want to hear more, see more Billy Dixon and what he does, you can follow him on social media everywhere at the Billy Dixon. Everywhere referring to Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. And with Twitter and Instagram, you can also follow us at CheckinBot on Twitter at Checking Podcast on Instagram. Find us on Facebook. Find us on UpliftUnited.com. And, of course, find this and all other episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker, and everywhere else that podcast can be streamed. But, most importantly, last but not least, if you're having some mental health struggles of your own, then please, I recommend referring to any one of the hotline numbers that you can find in the description below. And with all of that said, let's just dive right into this. How are you feeling mentally, physically, emotionally right now? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm a little tired, you know, getting ready for WrestleMania week, amping up some workouts, you know, um, you know, it's kind of things are heating up for me. So it's a it's a stressful time, but it's a good kind of stress because, you know, um, everything that I've worked for, this is the culmination this time of year. So it's a uh, it's a lot more positive than negative for me. I'm really glad to hear that. And just like since you mentioned everything that's you culminate with, like, I understand that you've been wrestling for six years, right? Yep. Okay. It'll be six years this July. Hey, all right. Come, happy six years, early six years. <laughs> and uh, with that said, uh, you've done a lot. You crafted different events. You've been the first openly gay, openly gay heavyweight champion in Virginia history. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You got that. 
you produced different events like Bridge versus Gore, you did Paris is Bumping, and now you're prepping the Cassandra Cup. Can you talk about what the Cassandra Cup is to start this off? Yeah, the, uh, the uh, Cassandra Cup is a um, tournament that is uh, in, in tribute to the famous luchador from Mexico, Cassandro. Um, and I asked his name, uh, I asked them personally for permission to name something after him. Um, and it features the best and brightest of the LGBT community in wrestling, um, competing for a, a trophy and also a Butcher vs. Gore championship match, an IWTV championship match, and other cool things yet to be uh, announced. Cool. And uh, speaking of Butch versus Gore, just to fill me in a little bit. So the star has an event about this time last year. It might have been WrestleMania weekend last year, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. And now it's turned into its own promotion. Is that Yeah. So um, it happened a little bit before WrestleMania last year. So this would have been, we were the last major independent wrestling show to happen before uh, COVID lockdowns uh, were in place. So we really lucked out there. Um, and, you know, over the course of the year, things happened. Uh, the company that Witch versus Gore, the event was under kind of collapsed. And uh, me and my partner, Lo, we've talked and we were like, well, we don't want to not have wrestling that represents the Washington DC area and represents the things that we believe in. So I don't know. Let's try to run a wrestling company and see how it goes. That's a big leap. I'm very happy for you in that regard to make that big leap. And um, with that said, just for listeners who may not be into wrestling right now, can you tell just like a brief summary as far as just your journey in wrestling and why you decided to become a wrestler? Um, yeah, so I'm not that unique. I was a fan of pro wrestling as a child and I uh, watched it with my grandparents a lot and I uh, left a college exam to uh, pursue my dream um, and from and uh, kind of took off from there. So it's always been something I've really loved and you know I didn't think that it was possible for somebody like me to be able to pursue wrestling but uh, it is. <laughs> nice. And as a wrestler, specifically as a wrestling promoter, you've gone out of your way to really try to make a diverse wrestling space in the larger scope of wrestling with all of your different events. So I want to ask just not how important is diversity to you, but how do you go about ensuring diversity? Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. So diversity is very important, first of all. And I think the thing about diversity is you have to be really honest with yourself and you can't do the thing of thinking that diversity happens on accident. I think when you kind of kill the illusion of it all just magically happens and you know you move forward with intent and your intent is for good and your intent is to make sure you can uh, you know, represent as many communities you can, and that there are very talented individuals in the communities that you're uh, trying to bring representation to, I think that's when you you can create something really fun. But I think it's, it's really important. It's really important to um, know that diversity is, is a very intentional thing, and it happens on purpose. It isn't something that is accidental, you know? Absolutely. And uh, if we can just backtrack a little bit, I'm kind of realizing that when we did talk about the Cassandra Cup, we didn't really talk about Cassandra themselves because I'm not familiar with them very much. So for myself and listeners, can you explain who Cassandra is and why you thought they were, they were special enough to deserve their own tribute, so to speak? Well, um, Cassandra is, you know, I think the, the, the example of excellence of somebody from the LGBT community in professional wrestling, he was, he is, he is still wrestling to this day. He is a, a wrestler from Mexico. 
who uh, is known as an exotico, which would be the term for a flamboyant, often, you know, um, homosexual professional wrestler uh, with loud outfits and, you know, flamboyant characteristics and presentation and things of that nature. And, you know, he has reached incredible heights that, you know, were not really possible and has created a legacy. You know, he has set the groundwork for there to be wrestlers like Jake Atlas and Sonny Kiss wrestling on television today. So, you know, he is kind of the blueprint for uh, LGBT performers in professional wrestling. And when you look at the landscape of uh, queer people in professional wrestling, you know, a lot of the history has been kind of, you know, in the shadows or in the secrets. You know, a lot of people came out a lot later in life. Um, and at this point, you know, there's a lot of tournaments and a lot of great things for, for people. And there really isn't any kind of calling card or any kind of celebration to the history that LGBT people have within the wrestling space. So the Cassandra Cup is like a step in acknowledging our past and it, you know, and not, you know, and not erasing it. You know, sometimes when uh, industries or or spaces, you know, decide that they want to do the whole diversity thing or the whole uh, we're acknowledging these group of people things, the contributions of performers past gets often left by the wayside. So the Cassandra Cup is a way for us to honor and recognize uh, those that made it possible for us in the past, but also using some stars of the future. So that's kind of why it, you know, this tournament has its namesake. That's really beautiful, I think. And since you do mention the uh, stars of the future uh, for wrestling fans who are listening right now is there any names that you can bring up who have been announced for the show who will be making appearances yeah so yeah the uh, the entire uh cast of characters on the uh, cassandra cup haven't announced um the eight participants competing for the cup are erica lee that 90s chick ac mac the mac of all trades the uh star of the show ashton star the skeleton key josh Wavera. Molly McCoy, Killian McMurphy, and Jared Evans, and also um, Edith Surreal, formerly known as Still Life with uh, Apricots and Pears. Nice. I recognize, a few, right, I recognize a few of those names, and they're very super talented comparisons. I can't talk today. I apologize. <laughs> oh, you're fine. <laughs> and uh, I guess to just detour a little bit from what's well, still like on the subject of wrestling, but I really want to get on the idea of just the mental health space in wrestling because everybody knows the physical risks when it comes to wrestling, but I feel like it often goes overlooked, just not talked about as far as the mental risk. So I guess speaking from your perspective first, how has your mental health journey been throughout your wrestling career as far as the highs and lows? Um, so mental health is a really important thing to me. Um, and I think that you don't think about things and how they impact your mental health until unfortunately sometimes bad things happen. So for me, um, you know, uh, I had a point where I was kind of like hitting a personal rock bottom and I wasn't really in a happy, healthy mindset when it came to wrestling and I, you know, I was like not in a good space, but I think that, you know, in, in hindsight, what I would tell people about mental health and professional wrestling is you really want to make sure you have a solid base, a solid foundation and a solid uh, support group, a really tight support group who really is invested in you making your dreams come true because a lot of things in professional wrestling are really hard. You're comparing yourself to other people all the time their wins, their losses, their wins, their losses, their look, your body, you know, you, you know, one of the biggest things that you hear is that this is a cosmetic business and that will attack your self-esteem, you know, and comparison is the thief of joy, but it's also incredibly important to kind of be aware of your surroundings in wrestling because we each are small business owners and the businesses are our intellectual properties of these characters that we have crafted and created. 
So it, you know, it's incredibly, you have to be really business savvy, but it's also incredibly personal because you're talking about yourself. So it's important to, you know, have support for when things are great or things are not good, when you get an opportunity that you've worked for, when you don't, when you get passed up, you know, um, and it's also important to uh, separate the art from the artist and separate the world that you live in, the wrestling world and the world that you live uh, in your in your real world scenario as best as you can. It's really hard because both of these characters, you know, both of these worlds in, in, uh, inhabit the same body. So it's easy for there to be crossover, but maintaining a degree of separation is really important. So the biggest thing I would tell people with mental health wise for wrestling is that it, 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 it does really affect your mental health, but make sure that you can separate it when you need to separate it and make sure that you have a really good support system that supports you, the person, before a character or anything else. Um, and you will you will do a lot better than if you didn't. Absolutely. That's very well said. And on that note, is it is it correct to say that you've used wrestling as like a coping, me- uh, coping mechanism to help your mental health through years? Um, I, uh, I did before, but, um, for me, I think that talk therapy and in some cases, medication and other things are a lot better for you to use their, uh, uh, in, in, a therapeutical, I guess that's the right word, therapeutical, uh, ways. Um, so I don't try to let wrestling kind of solve my problems for me. I don't think that that's actually healthy. I think that that's really unhealthy. Um, you know, I don't treat wrestling like a nine to five job and I hate it, but wrestling has its place. I love it. It's a great outlet and it's a great um, way for me to express myself, but I don't use it when, I don't use it to, to kind of help soothe the pain in my heart because I think that that creates really bad personal boundaries. That's totally understandable. And um do you mind sharing what type of cope mechanisms you do have when your mental health isn't as best, whether it's related to wrestling or not related to wrestling? Yeah. So when my mental health is not feeling super great, I um, <laughs> I go to my mom's house and I um, wrap myself in my childhood blanket and I watch TV. Um, and that kind of makes me feel really good. I talk to my friends and uh, pass it out with them. I uh, like to be in nature. So in the summertime, I go to the beach and I go for a swim. And I really, I really think in the past, life I was definitely some kind of aquatic mammal. Um, I don't know which one. I also love, uh, walking on a pier, uh, by my home, uh, poetry, uh, watching. I, I, I love watching slam poetry. I love watching, I love watching other people, uh, use art. That makes me feel a lot better, you know, um, documentaries and things of that nature. I love seeing things that are passionate um, when I am not feeling super great. But I think the number one thing is, is um, when I'm not feeling great is I definitely take the time to acknowledge it and let myself live in that emotion and give that a period of time. And then I tell myself to get over it because, you know, life still is going to go on. So got to get with it. 100%. And um I feel like I have got so many different questions for you, but obviously you're a very busy person. I don't want to take up your time too much. So uh, before we get out of here, I just want to ask, like, is there anything be related to mental health, be related to your event that you want the listeners to know before we get out of here? Uh, mental health, uh, always, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to know what's wrong. And it's okay that it may take a while for you to figure out how to fix your problem, or if you have a problem, um, you know, I'm celebrating three months uh, of sobriety. And I didn't know that I had a certain particular issue until I took the time to address some behaviors in my life, you know, and there are things that happen in life that are not your fault. There are things that happen in life that, you know, are uh, circumstantial that you may have been born into or whatever the case may be. And I think it's important to acknowledge that things happen in life and that you can overcome anything and that truly the strongest person you know is the person looking at you in the mirror. Um, And to always 
always loved that person and it's hard. And sometimes I don't love the person who stares back at me in the mirror, but I'm trying to do right by him more and more each day. Um, so as far as mental health goes, I really think you should find hobbies that you enjoy and outlets that you enjoy and really let that be part of your therapeutic process, but also there is a, a, a great tool for professional help as well. Uh, as far as professional wrestling, um, I am a 25-year-old uh, a Black gay wrestling promoter that was kind of thrust into this role. I never necessarily wanted to do this this young. So if you are somebody listening that uh, likes to fund uh, arts, uh, my Venmo is the Billy Dixon. All, all of the funds go to the artists uh, that we do at our shows. And uh, the inaugural first ever Cassandra Cup is on iwtv.live or, you know, search your little uh, app stores for the IWTV app. It's about $9.99 a month. But if you use code Butch versus Gore, you can get five days for free. And we stream the Cassandra Cup Sunday, March 28th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are streaming live and Funny enough, that was the original date for WWE's WrestleMania this year. So we made Vince McMahon move the date of the biggest <laughs> show of the year. So support LGBTQ for wrestling, support uh, progressive for wrestling, support black for wrestling, support trans for wrestling, female for wrestling, all of the for wrestling support it. Excellent. That's really beautiful. First things first, step. congratulations on sobriety. That is amazing, amazing feat so far. Thank you. Good luck in your journey, and thank you for coming on this podcast. But before we go, there's just one really quick segment I want to end on that I like to end every episode on as far as just, I call it giving people their flowers, where if we never speak again, I just want to let the person I'm talking to know they're appreciated, and I appreciate you just for cultivating a diverse, open, often queer space or opening spaces that were often often held a stigma in wrestling and you're kind of reclaiming that space in a positive manner and you've done so well with your events so far i haven't seen paris is bumping because when it came out i was in a great place as far as just my place in wrestling i was just kind of off a lot of different things but when i saw butcher versus gore that was just one of the most fun, inclusive, diverse wrestling events I've ever seen. And just that's you you come off like a very humble person, but I definitely think you should pat yourself on the back for that. And seeing everything you're doing in the wrestling space, I think it's you're you're doing something special and you are a special commodity in this business. And you the wrestling space is so thankful to have you and I'm thankful to have you on this podcast. So thank you for coming on. Absolutely. I received that. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Thank you.